I'm sitting here with Sam Trotwine at our home in the Dominican Republic, and we've been talking about culture and life between the two different countries. Sam, you were born in the United States, but you grew up a big part of your life in the Dominican Republic. Tell us about some of what it's like growing up here. I mean, it's very different. It's probably the biggest thing I've learned from just living here and going back and forth is just the value of perspective. Because so, how, 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 how young were you when you came here? Six. Six. And so you've been going into, you've been studying in Dominican schools? Second to, seven, second to seventh grade. And then you went and studied in the States at a private school? Mm-hmm. So that perspective, that difference of perspective uh, of what you saw? Well, it's, I mean, they're very different philosophies toward, towards education. And there's always a lot of, there's a amount of tension, especially in the, the area of history. But it's... Give me an example. I mean... A good example would be Sir Francis Drake. Here, he's La Pirata, the pirate. He's um, hated, he's known for tearing down the capital. And why? Well, he was basically a terrorist. I mean, he, ca he came into the island with a bunch of English men with guns, occupied the main cathedral in the main, ca in the main city, the capital. In Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo. Um, and started tearing down buildings until they paid a ransom. And he's La Pirata, the pirate. Like, he's... I mean, everyone knows him by that name. And, and that's what the history textbooks in this country yes. portray. But in, in America, he's a great explorer. I mean, he's um, Sir Francis Drake. They named the Drake Passage after him. Yeah, he he destroyed the Spanish Armada. I mean, he's a hero. And just tensions like that, and especially the study, especially in social studies, have um, they've really kind of trained me to take almost everything I hear with a grain of salt. So, how do you look at American politics, uh, having looked at the two, the two perspectives of the two different cultures, and you're on your way to China uh, to spend a year in, in, in China? So, how, how, do, where, how do you see yourself? Um, like, do you see yourself as an American? Do you see yourself as Dominican? How do you, how do you see yourself? I'd say, I mean, not really any of them. Like, I'd say mostly as a citizen of the world. Like, I have an American citizenship. And I've lived here for most of my life, 10 years. That's right. So, you, so you, really, you become, like myself, you become an internationalist. You, you live multiple jurisdictions, you live multiple languages, multiple cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an expat. An expat everywhere. So yeah. when, you're back in, when you're back in the States, do you fit in? Um, it depends with what group. Like I fit in better with certain groups. I mean, in suburbia, not as much. And I spent a summer at Stanford, and I fit in pretty well there, just because you had a ton of, you had a very diverse, you had people from very diverse backgrounds. I mean, in general, the last everyone else, if everyone else doesn't fit in well, I fit in well. So you've become extremely adaptable. I guess you could say that. So we were talking, we were down in our river uh, earlier, and we were talking about uh, hydroelectric power, and we were talking about sort of uh, environmental issues. And you made a couple of interesting comments about just some of the things you've seen in the perspective of just your travels. Share some of that. Well, I mean, the biggest issue with environment is with the way the world's been running for the past 6,000 years. I mean, ever since we were hunter-gatherers hunter living in caves, um, human society has, has rewarded those who are best at treating nature the worst. So we've rewarded those who are the best at just almost in a sense abusing nature. The farmer who uses the most pesticides, who uses the most environmentally unsustainable methods, usually ends up with the best short-term crop. Mm -hmm. And it's um, and hence the most profit. Right. And so and profit is, especially in capitalism, is in a sense a reward. It's a stamp of approval on your actions. And um, so we've really been, we have a legacy of, in a sense, rewarding the worst practices with the most profit. But, so, so, so as you as you look towards the, the 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 future, do you feel hopeful? Do you feel you can make you can bring about sustainable change? Where do you feel as a young person? I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot that's wrong with the world, but there's also a lot that's right with it. And I think the best any individual can do is just make steps in the right direction, because in the end, the world is just a um a giant composite of a bunch of small steps, and it's um. I mean, I'd say I'm realistically optimistic in mm -hmm. the sense that things, when people, as people get more educated and as people get more empowered, they tend to make better choices. I mean, we're seeing that in the United States to a degree, we're seeing that um, in most, like in Europe especially, and um, 
it's I'd say I'm, I'd say I'm mostly optimistic. So, having spent most of your your life, a, a, a vast portion of your life, uh, in this country, what are the highlights of living in the Dominican Republic for you? I mean, the weather's one. It's mm -hmm. warm around. Paradise. Just look around. <laughs> it's green. But um, I'd say I've really enjoyed being part of two cultures. Really, that's you look in on both from the outside, and so I'm. A, I'm a, I'm much more able to kind of obsess both of them, both of them objectively. I mean, specific advantages to living here, I guess, Spanish should be one. And I just, um, you meet a lot more, you learn how to adapt to a much more diverse set of people. And you find the people here are much more friendlier than in the States? Um, well, part, depends on the parts of the States. I mean, New York, definitely. But, mm -hmm. um, like, I, I've learned how to, um, interact with a very diverse set of people because you just run into, um, just a lot more different types of people. And you, your, your, your family has come, came to this country as missionaries. Talk about the impact your family has made in this region. I mean, my mom's a doctor and my dad, um, well, he had an MBA, but he, he just runs, he mostly oversees our Dominican staff at schools and orphanages they run. And I, I, I think the best thing we've really done is, what they've done, would be um, education. Because education is building a Building a knee-how. Uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the the school that has really been helping uh, youngsters, and then the ark as the orphanage that your mm -hmm. dad has, your mom and dad has been a little critical part of, mm -hmm. of running. And I mean, one of the I'd say one of the best things about the orphanage is that the kids in the orphanage get an education. I mean, they um, my mom and dad's thing will see them through high school, and and in some have gone to university, right? Which is um, for, and they're, they're taking in probably the least empowered people in the community, the people who are the poorest, the people who have no parents, and it's um, allowing them to have the chance to do something in the world, because education is really the most pure form of empowerment, because information is, I mean, information is it everything. Is the access to information, and then it is the interpretation, the usage of information, the application of knowledge mm -hmm. truly is the power. Because, yeah, most of education is teaching you how to teach yourself. Like, learning how to read. I mean, Learning how to read is all about just learning how to learn more stuff. And the same with basic math. And so getting someone through high school will um, it'll teach them how to teach themselves. Teach them how to teach themselves. And after that, like especially in this modern era with the internet, I mean, you can learn anything. That's right. And, and hence why we do little programs like this, uh, sharing our travels, sharing our adventures, introducing you to interesting different people uh, as we travel around, around the globe. So Sam, sort of, uh, tomorrow you're off uh, to, to Europe and to Russia, and then you'll be coming back and then spending a year in, in China, and then ultimately uh, back to California to, uh, to university to study uh, at, at Stanford. So again, mm -hmm. thanks for being here, thanks for sharing with our viewers, and good luck on all the adventures. Thanks. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Neil.